Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Let's wait a second for people to be seated. Good morning. And welcome to Neighborhood Unitarian Universalist Church of Pasadena. Welcome to all members, friends, and guests. My name is Cynthia Kelly, and I am serving as your worship associate today. Welcome again. Neighborhood Church creates and grows an inclusive community of faith connected by love, spirit, and service. We acknowledge our presence on the ancestral and unceded territory of the Gabrieleno Tongva peoples, the traditional caretakers of the land and waters of our campus. With respect for the rights and wisdom of indigenous people, we acknowledge our harmful colonial histories. We commit to decolonizing our own practices, to learning new ways of being in community and with each other in good relationship with the indigenous people of this land and with the land itself. Today's service is led by Senior Minister Reverend Dr. Omega Burkhart, with the music led by Music Director Dr. Zena Robles, with Associate Music Director Wells Lang, uh, and the Neighborhood Chorus. We Neighborhood Chorus, I miss you all. Uh, <laughs> with Michael Faustus and our guest Jennifer Kwan. Please silence your devices as we begin our service. Families with children are always welcome in our sanctuary, and there is additional seating in the entry foyer and the narthus. I have two brief announcements, and then Reverend Omega has additional announcements. <clears throat> okay, everybody, ready for this. Neighborhood's young adult group, 20 and 30s, will be hosting a pumpkin carving, gourd painting, on the picnic tables in the fenced-in courtyard on Sunday, October 27th after service. All ages are welcome. <clears throat> we are excited for the opportunity to mingle with other church members and kids. Our staff young adult coordinator, Anna, Anna Presbo, will have an assortment of gourds for painting and a few pumpkins for carving. And don't forget to wear your Halloween costume to church next week. Get ready for a ghoulishly good time with drag queen bingo. Join host Rhea Billy at Rhea Billy Tatum and Emma Tatum for a hauntingly fun evening of bingo with a spooky twist. This is a family friendly event. All are welcome. Grab your friends and family and come down for a night full of laughter, excitement, and fierce competition all to benefit Neighborhood Church. Tickets are $20 for adults, $10 for youth ages 17 and under. To purchase tickets and view event details, see the link in this week's newsletter. This event sold out last time, so don't wait to get your tickets. Please contact Taylor Chausen for any questions. I have the pleasure of giving the third announcement, but I'm gonna start with a question, which is how many of you, show of hands, have struggled to answer the question, what the heck is a Unitarian Universalist anyway? <laughs> when somebody says, what are you doing on Sunday? And you say, I'm going to the UU church. And they say, what's that? Well, we're gonna gather next week on Saturday, uh, October 26th from two to four. Everyone is invited, no matter if you've been a member for four decades or four days, or you're just contemplating membership. We're gonna gather, we're gonna have a fun afternoon where we delve a little bit into the history. We're also gonna practice writing our elevator pitch. Now, an elevator pitch is meant to be short. And why an elevator yes. pitch? Because you use a wordy and we talk too much. So one minute, <laughs> we're gonna get together and we're gonna practice a one minute statement on what it is that we do here. So join us, you don't need to sign up ahead of time, but if you have any questions, let me know, or Ginger Fury, the Director of Congregational Life. 
And that's important because sometimes Uber drivers say to me, what is a Unitarian Universalist? And I go, uh, <laughs> give me a minute. So wait, it's an Uber speech. It's an Uber speech. It's not an elevator pitch, it's an Uber speech. <laughs> Okay, ladies and gentlemen, more extensive announcements as well as our order of service this morning are available in the link in your Saturday email. Uh, the service is also uh, visible online by scanning with your phone camera the QR code on the back of your hymnal. Again, welcome to Neighborhood Church, whoever you are wherever you are on your spiritual journey. Welcome to this inclusive faith community connected by love, spirit, and service.
Today we gather in community. It is truth of our interdependence made manifest. For while we are a people independent of each other, we are made community by our reliance and our support of one another. We forge friendships built on shared experience. We grow capacity for our own grief when we accompany others in theirs. We learn the value of a helping hand when we extend ours, just as when we accept the help of others. We welcome joy into our own lives when we joyfully celebrate the successes of others. Our third in a series on deep listening this month, today we focus on the deep listening of accompaniment and mutual aid. This is Pastoral Care Sunday, when we honor the care that our community shares with one another. In the words of Starhawk, we are all longing to go home to some place we have never been, a place half remembered and half envisioned. We can only catch glimpses from time to time. Community. Somewhere there are people to whom we can speak with passion without having the words catch in our throats. Somewhere a circle of hands will open to receive us. Eyes will light up as we enter. Voices will celebrate with us whenever we come into our own power. Community means strength. Strength that joins our strength to do the work, the work that needs to be done. Arms to hold us when we falter, a circle of healing, a circle of friends, somewhere where we can be free. Come, let us worship together this morning. Let us center ourselves in our arrival today. Our becoming has led us here. Our becoming has led us to this where and when. I invite you to sit planted in your seats, feet held by this strong earth spine straight and reaching towards the heavens, breathing in, breathing out. You, solitary you, independent body, find in yourself your center. Imagine that center warming slightly first, imperceptible, now warming, growing. Perhaps you might call this center spirit. Perhaps you call it love or life force. Breathing into that center. Breathing out. Now imagine that center, that spirit, love, life force, 
as it warms your core, it spreads to your feet and your hands now beyond your center and now beyond you. You are interdependent. Imagine your life force now as part of a whole. It is commingled here in this community of care. And now that spirit made stronger by those in this community, that spirit holds you, it nourishes you, it warms you. Let us sit for a moment in silence. Breathing in, slowly open your eyes, gathering that spirit that binds us together as community. Please rise in body or in spirit and join us in singing our gathering hymn, our opening hymn number 347 in your gray hymnal. Gather the spirit. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Good morning. I'm Matt Vasco, Neighborhoods Director of Spiritual Exploration, and I would like to welcome all of the children and youth to the front for a story for all ages. Hi, Eli. How you doing, buddy? Yeah, I have a seat right on the log there. Perfect. So kids, did you all hear the announcement at the beginning of service today to wear your costumes to church next Sunday? Well, I, that was for everybody, but I want to make sure the kids were listening when that was said. Yeah. Yeah. People of all ages are welcome to wear your costumes. But for the children and youth, we're going to have a costume parade around the inside of the sanctuary to show off your costumes. And you got to wear your costumes so we can do that. So Reverend Omega said that this month we're focusing on deep listening. And part of that listening is just sitting with one another and being with one another and taking care of one another. And this Sunday is also Pastoral Care Sunday when we as a community talk about volunteering to care for one another. So I brought a book about that called A Sick Day for Amos McGee. It's about communal care. It was written by Philip C. Stead, and illustrated by Aaron E. Stead. And it goes like this. Amos McGee was an early riser. Every morning when the alarm clock clanged, he swung his legs out of bed and swapped his pajamas for a fresh pressed uniform. He would wind his watch and set a pot of water to boil, saying to the sugar bowl, a spoonful for my oatmeal, please, and two for my teacup. Belly full and ready for the workday, he'd amble out the door. Every day, Amos waited for the number five bus. Next stop, City Zoo, the bus driver would call. 6 a.m., right on time, Amos would reply. Amos had a lot to do at the zoo, but he always made time to visit his good friends. He would play chess with the elephant who thought and thought before making a move. Run races with the tortoise who never, ever lost. <laughs> Sit quietly with the penguin, who was very shy, and lend a handkerchief to the rhinoceros, who always had a runny nose. <laughs> and at sunset, he would read stories to the owl, who was afraid of the dark. <laughs> One day, Amos awoke with the sniffles, and the sneezes, and the chills. He swung his achy legs out of bed, curled them back again, and said, Ugh, I don't think I'll be going to work today. Meanwhile, at the zoo, the animals waited for their friend. The elephant arranged his pawns and polished his castles. The tortoise stretched his legs and limbered up. The penguin sat patiently all by himself. The rhinoceros worried that his allergies were getting worse. And the owl perched atop a tall stack of storybooks, scratching his head with concern. Where is Amos? the animals wondered. Later that day, oh, they're on their way somewhere. Oh, there they are waiting at the bus stop. <laughs> oh, there they are riding the number five bus. 
Hooray! My good friends are here! The penguin brought a balloon. The elephant prepared a game of chess. Amos thought and thought before making a move. I'm too tired to run races today, said Amos to the tortoise. Let's play hide and seek instead. The tortoise hid inside his shell. Amos hid beneath the covers. Amos yawned. I could use a nap. The penguin sat quietly, keeping Amos's feet warm. Achoo! Amos awoke with a sneeze. The rhinoceros was ready with a handkerchief. I'm beginning to feel much better, thank you, said Amos to his friends. He swung his legs out of bed. Perhaps we'll share a pot of tea. Amos wound his alarm clock. It's getting late, he said. After all, we have a morning bus to catch. So Amos said good night to the elephant, and good night to the tortoise, and good night to the penguin, and good night to the rhinoceros, and good night to the owl, who, knowing that Amos was afraid of the dark, read a story aloud before turning out the light. The end. <laughs> Mutual care, right? They cared for one another. Amos cared for the animals at the zoo, and when he needed someone to care for him, the animals were there for him, weren't they? Lovely story. Let's all sing our children and youth out to their spiritual exploration classes. business. <laughs> Each Sunday, our congregation dedicates 100% contributions to 501c3 organizations or neighborhood church-based social justice activities that are making a difference in our community and the world. Each selected guest organization aligns with our community's missions and values and is nominated by church members who are often longtime volunteers and supporters of these change-making organizations. You can donate in one of two ways. You can use your cell phone to donate by texting the number on the screen, and the number is on the screen, hello. Uh, or if you would prefer to donate in person, put the donation in one of our designated boxes. So we have a designated box here at the back of the inn. And outside in the entryway on the table. <sighs> you may rise during the music to put your donation in the box. If you wish, please extend help to those in your neighborhood who may help assistance reaching the donation box. If you wish to make a payment towards your pledge or contribute to church operations, Make a note in the subject line or use an envelope available in the donation boxes. This week, our gifts will support Team Lucas. Yeah, please. I, I have a, a trans child, trans gang, grand child. This week, our gifts will support Team Lucas. Here with more information is Marilyn Dupar W. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Good morning, everybody. I'm here today in my purple Team Lucas t-shirt to talk about AFSP, 
American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. For the last few years, a group of us from Neighborhood Church have joined the Out of the Darkness Walk, which takes place in Pasadena each year. Here's how it got started at Neighborhood. Lucas Pender was a very talented artist, musician, and writer. He loved to question the status quo and was a champion for social justice. Lucas died by suicide on November 8th, 2012, while he was a member of our senior high youth group. Susan Pender, his mother, was a longtime member of Neighborhood. She became a powerful advocate for suicide prevention after the loss of her youngest son, Lucas. Susan and I became friends, and sadly she passed away in August of 2022, but we continue to volunteer for this worthy cause once that awareness of AFSP lit a fire in our hearts. As Susan used to say, it's important to talk about suicide. Talk saves lives. That's why we talk about suicide in this community. We advocate for suicide prevention and for the people to get help when they're struggling. Mental health care is health care. Suicide is something that no family, church, or community should ever have to go through. And the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention and the Out of the Darkness Walks are working to make that so. Lucas's favorite color was purple, so we wear purple when we participate in the Out of the Darkness Walks. This year, the walk will be held on Saturday, November 2nd, and there's still time to join our team. We have a goal of 20 team members this year, and even if you're not able to walk with us on November 2nd, joining our team will help our team total. There are flyers available in the spiritual Explo exploration table after the service with a QR code to make it easier for you to join the team. The walk starts from Central Park in Pasadena and will travel down Colorado Boulevard to Lake, circling back uh, and ending where we started at the park again. Dogs and children in strollers are welcome at the walk. I walk not only to remember my advocate friend Susan and her son Lucas, but also because I have close family members who struggle with depression. I want to take action and be an advocate and keep talking. Out of the Darkness Walks are the major fundraisers for the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Funds raised allow AFSP to invest in new research, to create educational programs, to advocate for public policy, and to support survivors of suicide loss. AFSP played a major role in advocating for the national 988 number for suicide and crisis help, helpline. This year we have a goal to raise $3,500 for AFSP. Lucas believed that we could create a brighter future through our actions, and now we have an opportunity to create a brighter future by donating to support the worthy cause of AFSP. Thank you for generosity. Thank you for your generous donations. We ask that you refrain from applauding after today's anthems. The first anthem is translated, Veni Sancte Spiritus, come Holy Spirit, and send from heaven the ray of your light. Come, parent of the poor, Come, giver of gifts, come, light of hearts. Come, Holy Spirit, O light, most blessed, ray of light, light of hearts. Come, uh, sorry, best of counselors, best of consolers, sweet guest of the soul, sweet refreshment. In labor, bring rest. In heat, bring temperament, temperance. In grief, bring solace. O light, most blessed, Fill the inmost heart of your faithful. Without your divine will, there's nothing in us, nothing that is not harmful. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and by your love in them, kindle the fire that by the diversity of all languages and tongues, all people have been gathered together in a unity of faith. This is Veni Sancte Spiritus. Then he 
Spiritus, 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 In The Prophet by Khalil Gibran, a wizened old man arrives in a village and the villagers, recognizing his experience, begin to ask him questions. Almitra and others of the town ask him to speak his philosophy, his understanding of various subjects, including love and freedom and work. And Friendship. The reading today comes from that section. And a youth said, 
speak to us of friendship. And he answered saying, your friend is your needs answered. He is your field which you sow with love and reap with thanksgiving. And he is your board and your fireside for you come to him with your hunger and you seek him for peace. When your friend speaks his mind, you fear not the nay in your own mind, nor do you withhold the eye. And when he is silent, your heart ceases not to listen to his heart. For without words in friendship, all thoughts, all desires, all expectations are born and shared with joy that is unacclaimed. When you part from your friend, you grieve not, for that which you love most in him may be clearer in his absence as the mountain to the climber is clearer from the plain. And let there be no purpose in friendship save the deepening of spirit. For love that seeks aught but the disclosure of its own mystery is not love, but a net cast forth, and only the unprofitable is caught. And let your best be for your friend. If he must know the ebb of your tide, let him know its flood too. For what is your friend that you should seek him with hours to kill? Seek him always with hours to live. For it is his to fill your need, but not your emptiness. And in the sweetness of friendship, let there be laughter and sharing of pleasures. For in the dew of little things, the heart finds its morning and is refreshed. Thus ends our reading this morning.
Here we are in church, and I know we're live. It's not a part of my elevator speech or Uber uh, pitch, but I do have a confession to make. When Sue asked me to speak this morning at Pastoral Care Sunday, I thought, yeah, sure. But I've already told my story. I don't know what else to say. And I thought, and I realized that my story, my journey as I told it two years ago, has in fact changed. My experiences with pastoral care have expanded in a good way, and I'm happy to share that story. You all know, we might need a little refresher, pastoral care is a multifaceted committee, meeting the needs of our congregation better than any other system or institution I've known in any setting. The areas of support with the help of extra volunteers include meals, transportation, companionship to attend church, delivery of holiday wreaths for those who don't think they can celebrate the holidays, and a much under uh, acknowledged position, the scheduler of the month, who organizes and orchestrates all of these services, including the committee members and volunteers to make sure that no one is overwhelmed by too much food at once and no one is overlooked. For the past year, the last year that my husband was ill, we received many of these services that I've mentioned here, including lots of delicious meals, beautiful wreaths, charming visits, and just good old fashioned sing-along hootenannies. We were on the end of life cycle, <clears throat> but I know for a fact that services are also provided for families with newborns or post-surgery patients or those just feeling lonely or sometimes for any other reason. But the Pastoral Care Committee is a soup to nuts group and that is where the new part of my story comes in. Their help with the memorial service was amazing. For our family that occurred exactly one year ago today. Sorry. But the committee helped. They helped with setup. They helped with cleanup. They coordinated all the support we needed during the service. Sue was able to guide me towards printers, towards caterers, and I felt cared for when I needed it the most. And of course, Reverend Omega was there for us the whole time as an ex officio member of the committee. Now one aspect of Pastoral Care Sunday is a general explanation and education about the committee. <clears throat> Another aspect, at least as important if not more so, is recruitment for committee members and general volunteers. So I leave you with my own personal observation. It's better to give than to receive. <laughs> I have given many of these services even without being a member of the committee. And I have received many of these services. And both experiences have been very rewarding, but if I were allowed to choose, I recommend the giving side. <laughs> Please consider if it might be something that you could do, and I promise you will feel good about the giving, and when or if you ever need to receive, you will feel good about the receiving, you will understand and appreciate it, and you might be able to ask for it more easily. Thank you. I'm Mimi Hennessy. We didn't coordinate, but Mary just gave my pitch. So. <laughs> I'm not sure what else to say, um, <laughs> but I'll try again. <laughs> um, Sue asked me to speak briefly about my experience with pastoral care as a volunteer and serving on the committee for several years and as a recipient of services, um, generous cards when I had cancer at a distance in Laguna Beach and um, amazing help with the memorial service for my beloved sister, Gay, here in this sanctuary. Um, and they were awesome. But 
I want to talk to you about what I think I get from being part of pastoral care. Oh, and I have an editorial aside. Um, I, I've never liked the name pastoral care. Sorry, Sue. <laughs> but I just, I think it's one of those terms like religious education that could seriously do with a makeover since, you know, it, we, we're really not into herding flocks or Christian ministerial guidance. Um, but whatever it's called, here's what I understand it to be here at Neighborhood. I think of it as a community of shared care a practice of our commitment to have and hold love at the center. For me personally, it's been an opportunity, a chance to be my best self, a chance to live into our commitment and our values to be a beloved community indeed as well as intention. If you haven't done it before, I think Mary beautifully summed up all the ways in which you can participate. Uh, you know those cards and letters can be written from home and they are a joy to receive. Um, and meals don't have to be homemade. Store prepared works great. Um, and the companionship and rides and, you know, all of it, whatever you sign up for, it's what you feel able to do this year. And as Mary, uh, as Mary talked about the job of matching, you know, matching is done geographically so that it's usually as close to you as possible. And depending on where the needs are or the opportunities to help, uh, you might never get called. And I know some people who've never been called and they were kind of put out about it. Um, which, you know, I'm, I'm delighted by your disappointment at the chance. <laughs> Um, but I hope if you signed up and never been called, I hope you'll sign up again anyway, because I really think that the fabric of community is stronger just for the act of your signing up. I know lots of you, um, even if you're retired, you lead busy lives, and I think it's you know, you can be very concerned that, well, maybe you'll be called and you, it won't be a good time. You won't be available. Um, life is complicated. Stuff happens. And I admit, there were times when I thought, oh, please don't call me today. Um, if, you know, if you're, that's understood. But sign up anyway and say no if you need to. You might think, I'm brand new, I don't know anybody, I, I'm too new, I can't do this. I hope you'll sign up anyway. It's another way to be connected, to be a part of things here at Neighborhood. Um, Mary stole my closing line. A great prophet once said, it is better to give than to receive. And I think most of us would agree, it's a hell of a lot easier to give than to receive. And sometimes it's just hard to ask. So I hope you'll sign up for the chance to give when you are able, as you are able. And as the world turns, receive with gratitude when you have a need that is supported by this beloved community that holds you.
Hello. I'm Sue Erie. I'm the pastoral care coordinator. Um, I am about to read, though, a testimony from Lauren Worley, who couldn't be here this morning, but just pretend for the moment that I'm Lauren. Pastoral care has played such an important part in our lives in the last five years. In 2019, the team helped us navigate becoming parents of twins, providing food to nourish our bellies and company to keep me sane. The members of neighborhood made sure we had food in some form, a fresh meal or leftovers because of the size of the meals for almost a year. Last year when we decided to share the cancer journey Mike was going through, pastoral care stepped up again. The team constantly checked up with us to see what we needed and shared the meal train that was created after Mike's surgery. Mike is the primary cook of this family, unless you need dessert, of course, and having meals taken care of allowed him to focus his, on his rest and recovery. This past April, we called on the help of pastoral care again, as Mike ended up with an infection that put him in the hospital for just about a month. Meals, emails, and the general care from pastoral care committee helped me as I navigated so, solely sole parenting for our now five-year-old twins while he was recovering. I was so grateful for the meals we received and the DoorDash cards that allowed me to figure out other meals without having to coordinate with anyone and allowed Mike to order food when he was home for a brief stint between hospital stays. Mike and I are eternally grateful to the church for stepping up and helping us to navigate the hardest years of our lives together. As Mike was in the hospital in April, he kept expressing concern for me regarding meals for the family. There's a good reason he's primary chef. <laughs> and I was able to reassure him by reminding him that we had our friends and our church community helping us every step of the way. Pastoral care has allowed us to focus on the care of our family, knowing that church has our back every step of the way. That's Lauren. And this is me. I have the support and the hard work of 13 pastoral care team members and the critical involvement of volunteers identified in our survey, the one you found on your chairs. Ta-da. <laughs> um, this is uh, through the generosity and the kindness of these members, we are pleased to provide basic short-term services, such as rides to doctor's appointments and occasionally to church, meals for those recovering from illness, phone calls, emails, cards, notes, errands, and grocery shopping. Additional to the basic services, the pastoral care team itself provides specialized services such as phone consultations, resource research, peer support, holiday wreath deliveries, and memorial receptions, as you heard earlier. The effect of our work on those our volunteers serve is meaningful. It's always appreciated and occasionally critical to the member. Our volunteers often find renewed or newly formed connections with the members they serve. Last year, a combination of services provided by our church volunteers and the pastoral care team totaled 1,146 services. And that's, that's you guys. That's, we wouldn't be able to do that with 14 members. Yay. <laughs> Our church members know, knew that they had support through pastoral care and requested services they perhaps never anticipated needing, but were critical to their recovery. They were either faced with illness or with the best of circumstances, like a new baby in the family. Today we have featured members that have stories to tell about their experiences giving or receiving services, sometimes both, mostly both, through pastoral care. Our ability to serve rests on you. That's important. Both your generosity in volunteering and strength in asking for help when you need it. Since we create a new database every year, we hope that you will complete your form right now. For people attending the service online, you can access our pastoral care survey form by going to the pastoral care page on our neighborhood website under menu. People's lives and availability change, and we need current information for every volunteer. We, we assign volunteers located lo closest to the requesting member with matching needs and preferences. So if you were not called in the past, please know you were not being ignored. Our pastoral care program is one of the most important functions of this healthy church community. Thank you so much for what you have accomplished. Please take a few minutes now to keep it strong by completing our survey form. You can give your form to team members in the narthex or at our table on the patio as you leave. 
We look forward to working with you. Thank you. Our closing hymn is number 413 in your gray hymnal. Please rise in body or in spirit and join us in singing Go Now in Peace. We will sing it three times in canon as you like. How we do small things is how we do everything. The care that we manifest in this community led by our pastoral care team through the acts of accompaniment, service, helping hands, and loving hearts, this is how we go into the world. It starts here. As Khalil Gibran says, for in the do, of little things, the heart finds its morning and is refreshed. May it be so. Good morning. October is Filipino Heritage Month, and so, yes, yeah, so we are so happy to present this piece for you. Um, Filipinos love, love, love their love songs. And so the first song, the prelude, is Aro Gabi, which translates to day and night. And it's about how your laughter, your smile, um, just, I'm so drunk off of our love. And so, um, yes, our second song is Dahil Sayo, and it's a pretty famous uh, Filipino song. And it uh, translates to because of you. And, um, the lyrics kind of translate to, in my life of struggle and strife, you, are, you appear and um, your, uh, your love is what keeps me alive. I want to just keep loving you until the day I die. So um, please enjoy. <laughs> Um, 
man di wala nang langit at nang lumigaya hinamo mo sa dusa tanging ikaw sinta ang aking pag-asa Sa'yo, nais kong mabuhay Dahil sa'yo, hanggang mamatay Dapat mong tantuhin, wala nang ibang gilid Puso ko'y tanungin, ikaw at ikaw rin, dahil sa'yo, ako'y lumigaya, pagmamahal ang alayan ka. Ay alipinin mo ang lahat sa buhay ko dahil sa iyo. Kung tunay man ako, ay alipinin mo ang lahat sa buhay ko.